Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW repairs and information. Well, here's my lovely E31 840Ci, which has got 4.4 litre V8 engine in it. That's my 650i, which has a 4.8 litre V8 engine in it. But this car and the E38 and the E39 with the same engine produce 286 English horsepowers, whereas the 650i produces 370 English horsepowers. What made the big difference between these two cars? It's not the Vanos system because of course the E38 and E39 with the M62 TUB had the addition of Vanos on those engines. How much more horsepower did you get from those? Yeah, none. But that's still 286 for the M62B and the M62 TUB with the Vanos system. So what is the magic formula? It's the Valvetronic system, and that's what this episode's all about. And we're going to tackle it from three areas. First of all, we're going to dispel the rumours about the Valvetronic system. For instance, like you don't need a throttle body on them, and your throttle body's just open fully and only there for emergencies. We're going to knock that one on the head by having a look at the diagnostics of the Valvetronic unit, both stationary and on the road. Let's see if that throttle body just stays open all the time it doesn't secondly we're going to look at how it produces so much more power from just 400 cc more and lastly we're going to look at how to maintain it so it doesn't go wrong there's a lot of bits and bobs to a valve tronic system you don't want those going wrong and we'll go through how to keep it in good condition right let's get on with it okay before we go any further i thought i'd better explain what the valve tronic system is it's essentially a system that can adjust the amount of lift on the inlet valves, and it's the inlet valves only, not the exhaust ones. Does that in quite a clever fashion by having a motor-driven eccentric shaft. And now I'll try and explain what it is now. I've done some graphics. I hope no one pinches them because it took absolutely ages. They're not perfect, but they're close enough. At the top, we have what's called the eccentric shaft driven by a stepper motor. That's there to adjust the valve lift. And below it is the intermediate element, which is pushed by the camshaft. So here's one of the camshafts. There's the intermediate element. As the camshaft turns, it will move the element um, to the left and back to the right. And you can see the shape of the bottom of the intermediate element. It pushes down on the rocker, which is held in place on one side by uh, a lash adjuster, an HVA. Uh, it's got a little wheel on it so you don't get um, metal to metal wear. And then that pushes down on the valve. So by adjusting the position of the intermediate element, um, the top end of it, you adjust the amount of height you get on the valves. So we start with it fully, clock, uh, fully anti-clockwise. There we go, and you can see that the camshaft's really given the intermediate element a damn good whacking, the valve's pushing down quite a long way. That's where we're getting our 9.85 millimetre lift, so we're asking for full power. And then I'll change the graphics so that we now get just getting a tiny amount, so the eccentric cam has, the cam has turned to the right, getting much less push from the camshaft onto the intermediate element, much less valve lift. It's as simple as that. Well, it sounds as simple as that, but of course it's got all the, it's got springs to hold the intermediate element in place. It's got these rollers, got hydraulic lash adjuster. It's got all sorts of things going on, all sorts of things that can wear out um, if you don't look after the car problem. We'll have a look at that a bit later on. But yeah, it's complicated, but it's also very straightforward. It's quite a simple system but it works so successfully. Now, of course, there isn't just two positions of the eccentric cam. Think of the eccentric cam like a throttle body. When it's at that direction, it, you've got 0.3 of a millimetre lift. And as it turns anti-clockwise, it increases the lift and lift to get more power. So all that time we're driving the car, this eccentric cam's moving uh, anti-clockwise and clockwise all the time. Under control of the throttle pedal. Now, it's done with a stepper motor, and that's important because there is a sensor on the eccentric shaft, so it knows where the eccentric shaft is. 
and when the car first learns the eccentric shaft so if an eccentric shaft was changed the stepper motor runs and it turns the eccentric shaft and there's a, uh, a magnet on the on the uh, eccentric shaft which a hall effect device picks up and then it works out the position for 0.3 and the position for 9.85 that's saved in the dme and then the dme knows how many pulses to put into that stepper motor to turn that eccentric cam to the correct position so that's how it does it so quickly it isn't done by the hall effect device on the eccentric cam that would be too slow it uses steps in the stepper motor to position the eccentric cam exactly in the right place rightio well i think that's enough of an explanation yeah i'm sure this green screen isn't going to work but we'll give it a go right first of all i think we'll have a look at the first myth which is the throttle body on these cars isn't needed and it just stays wide open all the time and it's only there for emergency situations well that's not true on two counts first of all it's needed when the engines first started because the valve tronic system has to settle down and precisely control the valve lift and you can hear the motor do this when it first first starts up the tick over is different when it's first started to after about a minute when we go over to valve tronic control and quite a lot of people complain that when it goes over to valve tronic control they start getting misfires now let's sort of unpack that and have a good look at it first of all yep the throttle body is needed to start the car and then the valve tronic slowly beds itself into a point where it can precisely control the variable valve lift but at that point the throttle body doesn't fully open it can't do in instead it stays at about only six or seven percent fully open and it does that to ensure that the inlet manifold has a vacuum which is very important for the crankcase ventilation system now the way it works on these cars of course we have crankcase gases produced from the normal effects combustion and pistons whizzing up and down you get certain blow-by gases which not only contain hydrocarbons in the form of petrol but also oil as well oil is vaporized within the crankcase and if we just slurp that straight into the inlet manifold then we'd burn the oil and we'd get oil smoke from the rear of the car so we have a couple of things in its way first of all we have something things called labyrinths in the cylinder head covers and they're a sort of a labyrinth of oilways that the blow-by gases go through and it condensates the oil out of the blow-by gases which then return to the crankcase the pressure the crankcase pressure is controlled by two valves called pressure control valves and these are well known for getting stuck or splitting and causing all sorts of problems in, again including burning oil now for that system to work you have to have a vacuum within the inlet manifold and it has to be controlled by the pressure control valves the pcv valves now if we just had the throttle valve fully open then we wouldn't have any inlet manifold vacuum and that system doesn't work now this isn't just at tick over it's also required all through the power range of the engine we have to maintain that vacuum so the crankcase ventilation system works now it's often said and i think it was in engineering explained they said well what about the vacuum you need for other things like the brake booster for instance well these engines do have a separate vacuum pump often leaking and i've got another video that tells you how to repair them so they never leak again i'll put the link up there yeah so they say it's got a vacuum pump so you've no need to create a vacuum anywhere well as i've explained we do need to create a vacuum because of the crankcase uh ventilation system that has to create the vacuum for that to work so no matter what, how far you've got your foot far down on the throttle the, you'll notice that the throttle body position is changing along with your throttle pedal position and it's doing that to maintain a vacuum and not only sort of blurbing on and saying that's the case we can also screenshot it as well so i've got um carly diagnostics on here running at the moment so i've just restarted the engine 
got a screen recorder going and we've got the throttle angle is about 3.39%. The valve strokes up at six millimeters, which is its default value. And once the engine settled down, we'll see that the actual valve stroke reduces to about 0.3 of a millimeter. But also what we'll notice is that the throttle valve doesn't fully open. It can't do because it has to create that vacuum in the inlet manifold. So yeah, this for the first myth, we can see that the throttle valve is only 3.2% open and we can see that the valve stroke is still up at six millimeters. And it will sit like that for a little while until it's got itself sorted out. It's managed to measure the pre precise valve lift and then the engine will go over to valve tronic control. And it will do that in a few minutes. Probably about one or one and a half minutes it takes usually. Now while we're waiting for it to do that, we'll also talk about something else which is often uh, seen on the forums, which is, I've had this all this oil smoke problems, I've changed the, the stem seals and all the rest of it, I'm still getting oil burning. But if I stop the valve tronic system working, then the oil smoke disappears, or at least gets a lot better. What's that? What's going on there? Uh, I'll tell you why it happens and I'll also tell you why you mustn't do it uh, because we do need the valve tronic system and it wasn't put there just for a laugh. Not only does it increase the mileage you get from a gallon of fuel, the economy of the engine, but it's also there to increase the power. Now the default valve lift is about six millimetres, which is not far different from what it is on the M62 like in my 840Ci it, the most it can lift the valves is about six or seven millimetres. Well, in a valve tronic system, you can go very close to 10 millimetre lift, and that's pretty impressive, and that means you get a lot more air through the system, a lot more power out of the engine. So that's reason one, you don't want to disconnect the valve tronic system. Now, the reason that disconnecting the valve tronic system stops the oil burn is because of the inlet manifold vacuum. Now what's happening is that when you disconnect the valve tronic system, and that can be done in a number of ways, disconnecting the Phanos solenoids is one of them, disconnect the connectors and they seem to disconnect all four of them and yet and it stops the oil burning. I say yeah that fixed it. Oh by the way we're just going down to um, valve tronic control here so we're at 0 0.41, 0 0.36 and notice that the throttle valve is now open about six degrees. So we still got throttle valve control over the engine. Now at 0.3 of a millimeter, which is where it settles to normally when you're idling. Okay, so what's going on with this disconnecting the valve tronic system? Well, of course it will go over to throttle body control. So instead of having an inlet manifold vacuum of about 50 millibars, it will now, get, now go up to 500 millibars, half a bar, yeah, there's quite a depression in the inlet manifold, and on a crankcase ventilation system that's not working properly, i.e. The, probably the labyrinths have locked up in the valve covers, or the PCV valves have got stuck, you get so much more vacuum, it's much more efficient, and it does tend to separate, separate out the oil from the blow-by gases and then you don't burn it and you don't get the smoke. So that's how this plan works. Disconnecting the valve tronic system stops the oil burn. But the, the reason you don't want to disconnect it is, as I've said already, you get so much more power out of these engines with your close to 10 millimeter valve lift, get much better economy, much better control over the engine. It was designed to have Vanos and valve tronic and disconnecting either of them stops all of them working. So but it's been running so much better, there's no misfires, there's no smoke. Well, yeah, that is gonna happen, but you just you might as well have a 630 rather than a 650, you know. You're getting that much power from it and that much economy from it. So the fix on that is obviously have a look at the PCV valves, replace if you can. Well you can if they're DC, take you about 10 minutes aside and if you can clean out the labyrinths in the valve covers that is your problem the problem isn't the valve tronic system the problem is your crankcase ventilation system and that's why you're getting smoke at idle 
and not because of weird, some weird problem with the valve tronic or the Vanos system. Okie doke, so we've warmed up quite a bit now, 0.32 of a millimetre. So according to Engineering Explained, if I put my foot, foot on the throttle, well at this point we should have the throttle valve fully open anyway. Okay, let's give it some welly, see what happens. Yep, the throttle valve, 15% full, um, and we're giving it quite a few RPMs in. Let's give it a quick dab and see it happens. Carl is not that quick, by the way, at this. So, yeah, we've got 100% throttle body opening, and the valve stroke went up so much higher. It won't get up to 10 mil, well, it's 9.84 is as far as it'll open, not when we're just sitting on the drive. Out on a drive, we probably would. Oh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so there's two myths um, explained. One, the throttle body isn't fully open all the time. It has to be controlled to create an inlet manifold vacuum. And disconnecting the valve tronic system doesn't get rid of stem seal issues. It gets rid of uh, crankcase ventilation issues which are entirely repairable without ripping the engine apart. It's so simple, as I say, I'll put the link up again for it. So if you ha are having oil burning, don't blame the valve tronic system and disconnect it. For goodness sake, just sort out the crankcase ventilation system. Okay, let's give the car a bit of welly, see what sort of values we get from the valve lift and the throttle body. Right, values are just starting to come through. Thirteen percent throttle there. Bit of welly in third gear. Ninety-nine percent and nine mil valve lift. Yeah, that's just about it for the welly that was. We're coasting along. Foot off the throttle. Let's go into cruise. Cruise control on. Cruising at 60 miles an hour. There we go, that's what we'd expect. Throttle valve open, not much at all really, about 20%. Valve lift, one millimetre, yes. It's amazing how this system works, isn't it? Fantastic. Right, throttle control back to manual again. Cruise control off. Let's give it a bit of welly and see what happens. Yeah, throttle valve still not fully open, valve lift quite high. And of course, with that much air going through the engine, you still maintain inlet manifold vacuum no matter what you're doing. Okay, Tim, what are you doing with a syringe? Well, I'm going to show you how the Valvetronic system produces more power and better economy from the same cubic cc engine cylinder. And that's what this is. This is just like an engine cylinder. We open the valve, we pull in fuel air mixture, we compress it, ignite it, produce a power stroke. Now, one of Valvetronic's tricks is to be able to open the valve later in that cycle. Now, what good does that do? Well, if you're pulling in just a small amount of fuel air mixture, it's just sort of idling into the cylinder. You don't get such a great mix of fuel and air. You get some rich spots, you get some lean spots. And of course, when you compress it and produce the power stroke, it's less efficient than if it was mixed together much better. That's how Valvetronic gets better economy. So what it does is it waits until the cylinder's halfway down, pop, opens the inlet valve, and as you can imagine, it creates a vortex, much better mix of fuel and air. And then when you compress it and ignite it, you get much better burn, you get better economy, you get a cleaner exhaust. So that's Valvetronic's first trick. The second trick it can do is to pull much more fuel air mixture into the cylinder when you're at higher power. Now with a normally aspirated car, such as my 840Ci without Valvetronic, the inlet manifold's always at a depression, at a vacuum. And so we can simulate a vacuum by creating a vacuum within the cylinder. So this is effectively what's happening when you've got an inlet manifold at a vacuum. 
you've got a vacuum within the cylinder as well and when I let go of the piston it returns to 3cc so from a 4cc cylinder we only managed to fill 3cc's of it so I can imagine you're getting less power from it now of course the Valvetronic system has two tricks for this as well first of all the inlet manifold's not at a vacuum so it can quite nicely pull in fuel air mixture more importantly than that of course it's got higher valve lift so there's less obstruction to only fuel air mixture coming into the cylinder we can lift the inlet valve to more or less 10 millimeters and that lets a lot more fuel air mixture in so we've got two things working for us here we can open the valve further we haven't got inlet manifold vacuum which means we can pull more fuel air mixture in there so when you compress and ignite it you get more power from the same cubic inch cylinder that's how valvetronic works okay so we've seen how the valvetronic system works it's all about inlet manifold vacuum really having only 50 millibar vacuum in the inlet manifold means each cylinder can pull in much more fuel air mixture and provide more power from the same cubic capacity without the valvetronic system we've also dispelled a few myths one thing one thing being that the throttle body stays open all the time it doesn't and it can't because it has to produce some inlet manifold vacuum for the crankcase ventilation system to work so i'm sorry engineering explain which is one of my favorite channels should have really checked that and we also saw how you can get more economy from the same fuel air by opening the valve as the piston goes down to about halfway down and then just popping it open creates a vortex mixes the fuel air mixture so much better better burn more power from the same amount of fuel right and the final bit is how do you look after your valve tronic system well yep yeah, zoom out it's the same as always I'm always banging on about oil changes on these cars it is so important with the n62 don't go by what it says on the i drive on my i drive at the moment i think it says 15,000 miles until the next oil change yeah it's going to be zero miles <laughs> i'll be changing that this afternoon got to be changed every year and one of the important elements of oils which gets dispersed and evaporated is the detergents now the detergents in oil keep all the small oilways clear and it's the valve tronic that suffers from it i'm afraid and of course the timing chain tensioner is one of the others yeah the valve tronic systems right at the top of the engine does have very small oilways feeding oil into the cams and the followers and so on and if they're starved of oil i mean yes yeah, metal to metal contact as it is on the valve tronic system just wears away to nothing and then you get problems with uh problems at idle where you start getting misfires and it feels a bit lumpy and that's due to one of the follows being worn more than the others and that means that although you've got some cylinders with valves opening at 0.3 of a millimeter at idle yet yeah, some of them are not opening at all yeah i'm afraid that's what causes the idle problems yeah and i have seen reports of people changing all the elements of the valve tronic including the eccentric shaft the follows the springs the hva elements and it making no difference in those cases it's probably a valve problem just carbon built up on the seat of it and of course opening any 0.3 of a millimeter yeah if you've got any problems like that it is going to cause a misfire we also looked at why disconnecting the phanos or the valve tronic system in fact disconnecting the math does it as well can stop engine smoke but that's because of that situation you've got six millimeter default valve lift on the valve tronic the Venos isn't doing anything at all yet yeah, in those sorts of situations you might as well have had a 630 or something like that because you get much less power worse economy yeah it's just don't do it just sort out your crankcase ventilation system it's quite easy to do takes i don't know 30 minutes to do on this car so much easier than the e38s and so on right yeah well i think that'll do for this episode please put the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video keep com commenting i do love the comments and i will try to get around to answering some of them which i've missed recently and give you answers to those yep subscribe if you want to thanks very much for watching 
and I'll see you next time.